the man as just a sniveling, weak man, mm. in which forced her to encourage him to go work in the mine to prove that he's a man. We have an old lady who conceived very late in life, and it's the only son, and the son has also disappeared. So the reason why I placed it over the women in the nearest villages to Kimberley is because it is just natural that as the news of the disaster kept spreading, they would be the first one to hear. So now they have come for themselves to check. But Kimberley is such a culture shock. Number one is the compound system. Women are not allowed into the compound, so they are locked outside. And uh, because anyway, uh, Africans were treated of lesser, were of lesser station. So what it means is that they would not actually be fed information. They would not know how many of them died. So we have these women that have come and amassed outside this hostel com compound, and they looking for answers. And nobody is coming out to give them answers. Now that's from that's the premise we start from, and we go back to tell their stories how how they came about. It was a way uh, for me. It was it was a form of even if I don't give the men who perished names, at least I give them a brief life to to them, so that they should not be forgotten that they were men. Married, yes. in relationships, beautiful dreams, mm. and that dreams forced them to live the ideal mm. rural life, mm. to come into the city because the, the economy of the country was shifting. It was shifting. It was money. Mm. Uh, you, they would need to pay these crazy taxes as well. Mm. Uh, right. You know, buy clothes. food, clothes, and. Uh, you know, buy cattle to yeah. regain their stature. Mm. But the world is changing. The world is a terrible space and a terrible place. And it has taken its toll on, on the family unit. We forget that men who died were not statistics. They were men who were married, mm. men who, who were about to start their life. They were men who had children, who left children behind. They were men, and we, we needed to tell the story. But now, the thing that m m inspired me to tell the story, mm -hmm. since returning back to Kimberley, mm -hmm. my hometown that I love, mm -hmm. the crazy thing is that uh, people would boast about uh, Kimberley, the city of first. We are the first city to have streets light. First university started in Kimberley. Kimberly gave birth to Rustenburg and Johannesburg. Yes. We forget that it's not as light as that. There is pain and tragedy behind that. Yes. Yes. People have lost lives. People have lost life to build lives. this thing. When you you wonder why there there are not even a memorial a scholarship for for people who perished from all these things. People will be arrested. You work in the compound, but you can't just leave. And this compound, these compounds and hostels were terrible places to live in. Yet you cannot walk in the street. Your, 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 your time, the, there's a curfew. Uh, in Kimberley, it becomes worse because you could be stripped naked, maybe even given castor oil or something, because you're suspected of having swallowed the diamond. And these were men. Really? And you'd be Did arrested. They go for to them. that extent. It was extreme. They would not leave the the compound without the. I mean, I think apparently I was also told that these things used to happen even in the late 60s and 70s, where they have to pass through X-ray. You know. Mm. And so, so, so big hole is that hole mm. uh, where mm. our humanity and dignity was ripped out of us. Mm. It's not mm, just a physical big hole. Yeah. It's the hole that is within us, the mm. emptiness that is, mm. uh, uh, the breakdown of family yeah. units mm. to an extent that women were transformed into heads of household 
raise kids as single parents? What has it done to our morality? What has it done to our culture? What has it done to the family unit? And you break the family unit. You actually have conquered these people. Yeah. It's also uh, the, the, sense, the sense of uh, the biblical kind of uh, thing. I once heard somebody say, uh, um, and it was some, somebody drunk, who, you know these street preachers who would preach, yeah. and he was preaching about uh, mistrusting a woman because the woman mm, uh, copulated or whatever did with a snake. Uh, yeah, and that's how sin came into being because of the woman taking the apple from the serpent. And then some drunk guy just said something very profound. It was so deep. And that has always stayed in my mind. And when, I, when you get inspired to write a story like this, that thing stays in your mind where the drunk guy looks at the street pastor and he says, yeah, but where was Adam? Shouldn't he have been what, there to protect his wife? Doing? What was yes, he doing? Where was he? he? Doing? Yes, yes. And the same yes. principle is what has broken um, probably uh, Africans. Mm -hmm. From into slavery, you separate them and then the thing that kept the family unit mm. is broken it's down. Broken. The men are not here to protect their women. Mm. So how did you come about with this article? Were you just, was just randomly reading or were you... You see, that's a, that's a funny thing about... Uh, the, the, that's a funny thing about uh, uh, my writing. Literally every story mm -hmm. that I've ever written, including all mm, those plays that have won awards, literally, a gazillion of them that have won national awards. Each and every story I learned by them strangely. You know, they fall on my lap. Um, I was very young when, for example, when my, when my grandmother, uh, my grandmother told me about her grandfather. Mm -hmm. She died when she was about 97. And it was three years before I remember that time because that story stayed in my mind when she told me how Kimberly was and how the rules were. And I had, then I wasn't aware of, of, of the situation. I really wasn't aware how similar that thing was. Uh, the story that I f first wrote for Gramstown, which was awarded the uh, Standing Ovation Encore Award at the Gramstown Arts Festival. It was a story about uh, the illegal mind sifters then. Mm -hmm. But I had seen the headline in DFA. There was this guy who, there was a huge grader, you know, this mining grader. Uh, and the headline was these guys, uh, these illegal mind sifters around floors so of, what's that place? I'll tell you the name of the place, where they were told that they have 12 hours to leave because they were sifting for diamonds illegally. And it captured my attention, and that's how I, I wrote the play about Goon. What if you have 12 hours and you needed to find that big diamond, diamond. before you are evicted? Mm. Uh, what happens? What story would make you so desperate to go dig, mm. even when the last uh, mm. hours? Mm. And then, as I, I, I started talking to people who were illegal, Sifters. And then I realized that literally almost everybody carries dreams and the pain of things that they needed to correct. Mm -hmm. Go backward, rewind to more than 125 years. Mm -hmm. And the same thing, people who went to work in the mines, they were actually illegal except when they were in the compounds. The mines recruited them. They were mine touts and mm -hmm. called them Kalajan, Kalajan. Mm -hmm. and uh, they they used to trick and lie to the people about Kimberley being a city that sparkles and diamonds and stuff like that and people would come because they'd see them wearing mm, suits and trippy suits with Englishmen's bowler heads and uh, drinking white man's drinks and it was it looked like it was alive and then they come to here to try to, to, to break that. And then now, this story I came about, when I was doing that, I somehow just landed in the Africana library. 
mm. and I was reading and I was checking the mm, the old DFA. You know, this DFA always mm. has this caption, yeah, 100 years and stuff like that. Yes, yes, 100 years and ago. I don't know what drove me to that, but I landed there and I read about this mining disaster that happened here. 245 Africans died, mm. 45 white people died. And the deeper I went, the more I could not even get the names of these people. Mm. And I thought myself, I asked myself, who are they? Mm. As a writer, you do Look that. Look where, where, where they, are, they are, they from? Can, are they from? Yes. Well, in, in, in truth, they, they, well, they come from the entire African continent. They came from various places. But then, as a writer, when you, get, when you give yourself a creative license, you land in this, this kind of moment. But what happens a day after the, the mining disaster? What happens the morning after? People would not have traveled that fast. Traveling was a slow method. But then the people in the, around the villages, mind you, during the times of Cecil John Rhodes, when how uh, um, his argument was, you cannot have Bashapi. This land is, in, is part of the Bashapi land then. You cannot have Bashapi staying in these surrounding villages, being successful because they knew they were resourceful. Mm -hmm. So uh, they knew how to bring their uh, produce mm -hmm. to the city, to Kimberley. Mm -hmm. They knew how to fetch water and sell water to Kimberley because Kimberley, even now, is a dry place. Mm -hmm. And I think, I like to think that Kimberley was the first place where bottled water was sold. <laughs> and somewhere I've, I've, I've seen places where some writing where they say actually uh, a bottle of, uh, of brandy was cheaper than a mug of water, water. in Kimberley. And I asked yeah, myself, at some stage, at some stage yes, wow. when diamonds were just being discovered, mm. when they didn't have more water, mm. except those that were mining around uh, Peter Parker's so-called uh, Bagley West and stuff mm. like that. Mm. Anyway, and then I think to myself, how would people start coming here before the news spread even further? People will be mm. traveling from far, but who would reach this compound mm. earlier? Mm. Would be the people around these villages, mm. even as far as Madi Pelesa. Uh, mm. And then that's where I had these women come from. They would reach here first. They would not know exactly what, what place it is. But they, also, mm. how did they get the message? I don't think there were telephones. There, there were no or telephones. Radios. But you know what? Uh, but since the invasion of 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 Pukwan, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in uh, uh, on Boxing Day, since the destruction of Pukwan mm -hmm. around Pampistan, mm -hmm. already people still had horses and. Mm. Mm. So yes, that distance, and donkeys, that, yes, and donkeys, and, and, and but cows. that distance would, would not have been far. It would take you four hours, and bad news travel fast. It's like wildfire. Yeah. So they would have heard, you know. Mm. So they, they, they would have the bush telegram. The bush telegram, yes. Yeah. They would have they would, they would have heard, because Somehow. anyway, trade between mm, those villages and Kimberley never ceased to happen. Mm. So somebody uh, would, would would have gone and said, hey. Uh, a mine shaft collapsed and stuff mm. like that, and people would come there. But mm. most definitely, the first ones to arrive would be the, the one in the nearest villages who have partners. And that's how I thought uh, the story should be. Because there's no point in, 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 in African history where women were weak. That is why the old adage, has always been the ultimate universal truth, you know. So they would come to go. Uh, now imagine if a young maiden just fell in love and this guy says, I'm going to marry. And then he goes there. She would want to do that. Uh, the old woman who had her only son, whom she got in a, later in life, she's, mm, the son has disappeared. She doesn't know. You see, uh, the, the uh, also tragic moment is when that old lady re had received a letter from the son. Uh, the son who was not school, so obviously she asked somebody, he asked somebody to write the letter and the old lady cannot read. So she's been carrying this, uh, 
the letter as well. Yes, and then she comes to Kimberley without having found anybody to read the letter. Now she's here with a tragedy and her desperation is, I need, I need somebody to read me. Just in case my son is one of the ones who's there, I need to hear a letter. That's a, a beautiful, tragic line when she says, uh, my son is reached from deep, from the belly of the earth to bring me his words. I need for somebody to tell me what this was. And you know, she keeps begging these ladies. But these ladies are from the village with her. They, they don't even know how to read themselves. Yeah? Except the uh, prostitute, which, which was the culture of, 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 of minors and stuff like that. So this prostitute has, has known, knows Kimberly. And because of her trade, she had slept and had heard stories of this man, how they would miss home, how they would miss. So she is actually the newspaper. Well, she, she's the one who described how horrible the compound that they are standing outside of is inside. They are not allowed inside. She would describe how small the area is. How would she know? When all the other women don't know, yeah. I mean, she's a oh, business lady. Yes, she's she's always known. Yeah, she's always known how to sneak into. Uh, quite interesting. Very interesting. And how long did it take you to write this uh, this project? I am fortunate, uh, or rather, uh, insomnia uh, generally <laughs> makes me uh, spend a lot of hours. Although now it's become bad because if I have an appointment with you, unless you remind me seven times, I forget, I know. I would forget about it I because know. I haven't slept so I long. But I normally, look, and here's the crazy part, I met some of my friends who says I'm exaggerating, it's pretty impossible. Once I sit, I can procrastinate for a time before writing a piece, but as long as I get through it, I can spend three days <laughs> Sleepless nights to write and finish, mm -hmm. which is what this uh, and a couple of ones, it's this and Pokemon Chronicles and uh, Goon, the ones that I've written, that an MC, I wrote them in three days. You know. So all, all of those, and I was fortunate in that most of them won these awards. And uh, the one that mm, took longer. So I, I cannot really give you uh, a timeline. Yeah, time the inspiration, the inspiration yeah. always is yeah. the driving yeah. force. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the one that I wrote for the Market Theatre, which is also a beautiful yeah. one, history making, first Setswana production on a commercial stage, mm -hmm. uh, Le Patata. I actually took six months. To write it. Six mm -hmm. months. But generally... Uh, but not writing every day. Well, not writing every day, because sometimes you could write three scenes in a day, yeah. and then the next morning when you read them, they are so horrible, you just take, you throw them away and you start again from scratch. But this yeah. took me three days. It took me three days. Um, the guys, <laughs> my friends who are professional and committed <coughs> playwrights, say my plays on paper are the ugliest place written <laughs> because I don't follow conventions of playwriting. I don't even break them down <laughs> scene by scene until I've put them on stage and directed them. Then, that's it's only then when I say, oh, this is, this scene works, mm. this is the scene, this is whatever. Mm. So, until they got on stage, they will remain ugly. Then let's go to your, uh, your selection of characters, the real people now. How did you select them? Did you have auditions? Well, for, for this, um, all these ladies I, I had worked before, uh, as a matter of fact, I think the audition was done about five, six years ago because we did take it to Grimstown. Now, like all the other plays of mine that have won awards, they've never performed in Kimberley. So, uh, uh, so now what I've been doing is bring them back for the audience that it was written about and for. Why? Uh, it is a very difficult industry and sector as well. Uh, there's 
never ever money and and in a lot of the time you you get paid in lip service. You know, you have people, ooh, Kimberly has got talent, ooh, Kimberly has talent, but fuck him up, who's yeah. wrong? Why don't, why don't you assist? At least buy a ticket. So it becomes difficult. You have to go look for money. Sometimes you don't become successful. Sometimes you're just tired after having struggled to get to Grahamstown to showcase it on a national stage and you haven't received support. So now you get tired. So the ladies, about five years ago when we took it to Grahamstown, I did audition. And they loved it, but they didn't have money. So uh, the majority, but all of them are poor to us. In fact, the five and six hectares I did that, and then the other one, I used on a production called Zipirisa Hosi and I realized, but also because of age, bodies changes, maturity set in. Yes. So no matter if the hard ones to play a certain role you played when you were young, you know, that's a <laughs> you're a mother, you're a woman, you can't play that role. Then that's when I have to get you know, like, 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 I have to replace, yes. like, remove and replace. But I'm, 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 I can safely say I'm one of those, uh, with this cast, it's one of the safest because I've only had to re uh, replace one. You know. so, so that's why, uh, for me, the rehearsals are not really hard work because um, I have the misfortune. When you don't have a, a college that trains young artists, you have the misfortune of your rehearsal having to run longer, which means you yes. don't have money, but the rehearsal has to be longer. Mm. Because you need them to understand. And uh, it's, it's crazy because in our province, one of the craziest things is that a lot of talented people cannot read. They cannot even interpret the text. People finish metric and they are not truly even functional in literate. And that's a, that's a nightmare. So you wonder actually what's happening. And also the, the biggest challenge is the love of reading. The love of reading. Oh, the love of reading. Mean, you are more likely, and I know this is vulgar to say, but you are more likely to see a newspaper in the toilet than in the, than in the middle of a of books, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So, yeah. these are actual realities, so which, which makes acting? The culture of reading in our communities is, is a problem. I think with, with us, it's, uh, <clears throat> the tragic part is that it, because it is declining, it's not that it's not there, it used to exist strongly. Uh, people don't know for a fact, uh, I spoke to a friend of mine, Sabata Mukai, one day, and he, he was telling me, uh, years ago, he explained to me, for, uh, you must realize that the only reason why the DFA is still alive today, uh, uh, and all the Kuranta Tsabetsoana, all the other newspapers that have come, and a lot have come and died, is because the funny thing is that at a circulation of 27,000 copies then, mm -hmm. a truth of my majority of over 78% readers were in Khalishi. So it means that there used to be a culture of reading. That's, uh, that's how a newspaper like that could survive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There used to be a culture of reading. Mm -hmm. uh, see, reading, not necessarily by because when you read, you would read from cover to cover and then borrow the neighbor. Sometimes you send the kid and it take four hours to read your newspaper because somebody would want to read it. Somebody, would, before it comes to you, it's already steady news because everybody has tasted it, you know. But I also think that the content also comes Of course it is. I yeah. think that although uh, one can say, I'm not sure how it is. But one thing, maybe saying they had a, they had a real, they had a I think uh, that's the thing. Um, I also think that the level of cynicism 
people are becoming more and more cynical. Uh, newspapers don't have good news. Uh, but around the times of apartheid, I remember the headlines when I was very young. The he headlines that captured yeah, DFA. Uh, and I never forget that. Was the headline that read, Sereza Khama is dead. I knew it was something important because even as a young man, I uh, heard of this great man who defied a party and married and led the son to marry the white woman. And I remember uh, the death of Pagamil and Abidjan was also headlined. And uh, it, it was more than anything, those two articles that made me start reading uh, newspapers independently of of hearing these things, and that's how I got captivated. Those were negative things. But uh, uh, our people's mind and psyche, they knew what they were aspiring for. Now, uh, that, uh, fast forward to now, 20 odd years, 20 late years, into a new dispensation, the one motto, better life for all, has made people cynical because it's not really happening. And then now, uh, you cannot live here, you cannot feed your mind guy headlines for life that says, Shubhanu uh, <laughs> Bani stole millions, millions and millions and millions. And we come with it still, yes. just the name that changes, yes, but the pattern is the same. So there's no good news. I mean, I, I generally try to minimize uh, watching the news, particularly in the morning. I'm not going to start now my mornings, but especially with somebody who struggles to sleep. I'm not going to wake up and blow my mind and be bloated with negative news, never really good news. And I'm not going to go to bed and watch bad news. Because uh, I think the formula is one, bad news receive headlines. That is why sometimes you hear, oh, now for a good story and it's less than one minute. Yes, it's very short. You know, it's very short. Yes. But anyway, uh, we just have to continue doing this, uh, this thing. Uh, some of the things that I'm, I'm doing now, for example, it's a jubilee, platinum jubilee of this space, this theater, yeah. 70 years. And uh, when I took over two years ago, I just told myself, I'm going to push the motor, telling our stories, which means that I'm going to prioritize stories that come from the Northern Cape. Yes. That's not to say I would not accept other shows. Number one, if the theatre is not supported and funded, there is no way I could uh, cater for, for outside. Although I have something in the pipeline, and I bet you you will, you will hear about that in time, where I will be bringing a couple of people to come and do yes, but mix them with local. They come with their own production. And then I mix them with this because because you don't have a college, nobody can go to college and graduate. So when you get them on the street and you groom them well enough, you give them more opportunity for this. Yes. And then this is good. Back. More or less, how many plays have you written, or how long have you been in this? Uh, Look in this. I know during cover budget. Like it's been, it's been, it's a, uh, it's a, you were an actor by then? Yes, or I was an you, actor, but um, I was into writing. Uh, the funny thing is, uh, when I was in Mahigeng and attending school, and then this big, beautiful institution had just dropped, my friend called Mabana, mm -hmm. and we were encouraged to read. Uh, you were encouraged to read, and I, sometimes you read plays, and then you read the history of those plays, and you hear that this place have won international awards, and you look at me and say, but I can do this. So my acting and my writing has always gone hand in hand. I mean, uh, we used to have high school competitions of drama, and I'd, I'd write this place. But then, as I started prioritizing, for survival sake, I went deeper and deeper into acting, mm -hmm. but the writing never died. Mm -hmm. To show that there is history in this place. Mm -hmm.
past and a rich history of that. To them, and I realized those, that's where my mission is. Tell local stories. Go out to them and they always find me. So as to what I've written, it's, it's countless uh, to mention. Oh. Uh, there are a lot of independent writers and directors here. Each company doing their thing. There are a lot. But understand that uh, one of the reasons why uh, we're not actually blooming as we should, blossoming as we should, it's a total lack of support, including of our people, and particularly of our people. Uh, you are less likely to get a full house here. Yeah. You should be a standard. You're less likely to get a full house school, Kumaibuyo, which is Nukas. Yeah. Yeah, that you're struggling. So th there are, in terms of uh, local, when it's locked in the local, there are a lot that are coming up. I, I, I wouldn't want to pit them against each other. There are a lot, but if they're not uh, even supported, when, when Grahamstown is a nightmare, a horrible nightmare for that, then you have a, a big thing, you have a big problem. They can't even go to Grahamstown to showcase. I've seen some of the most beautiful works locally. Uh, beautiful pieces of work. I've seen them, loved them, and I knew they would have an impact if they were ever uh, uh, afforded an opportunity to go outside of the problem. They are, mind you, they are, maybe in time, it will be like that. We don't fight the same battle, we don't fight the same way. But we fight together. But we don't fight, the strategy is not the same. Was artists here. I still believe that I have to export my work from here. And the thing is, if you export it outside, too many people are more likely to appreciate it. They don't know their thing. They would not see the value of their thing. So, so do you mean that uh, the notion that the profit is not uh, It's absolutely true. Absolutely true. Um, but now exporting also its own um, value. It does. It's, it's, it's just a gamble. It does. Uh, but I would not consider it uh, that much of a... Look, you cannot... Uh, you would struggle to get funding from national. And your struggle uh, becomes doubly piercing. If there is no support locally, none whatsoever. But you still have to do that. But to do that, to go outside the problems for, for, for national support, you've got to prove that your work has quality. It's something. You cannot rely on, I come from this province. It's the only province that has a, con a considerable number of uh, Pumanisan. <laughs> <coughs> the coup and the que and whatever the numbers, it's not enough. How do you take what they have, polish it and take it outside? Have you ever done a production with the indigenous people? No. Uh, uh, no, although I'm working with people uh, in Black Country now for something big as well, which I want to do this year on the anniversary. Uh, no, but the reason is actually scary. The reason is, it is cheaper to leave Kimberley for Johannesburg than to leave Kimberley for Sandhurst for Spring. Okay. Now, if you have to take people that are 1,004 to 1,600 kilometers away from here and house them here, that's the cost. It's prohibitive. Cost is just prohibitive. Mm -hmm. And you're not gonna wanna bring somebody's child here and then you force them to fast. Go on a diet. Doesn't make sense. Not at all. Not so it's, at all. it's not for lack of trying. Uh, mm -hmm. The first time I should have done, what I wanted to do was 
because my tree was close on the sand because it was uh, based on the Romani community yeah. and how they were wiped out or the numbers reduced to that level. But I could not bring them, so I had to train people, get people from me to do that. But you can't you can, you can help them, but feel like uh, maybe in time. Although I don't think I have uh, time, I don't have the, the energy to go running around and batting heads of people who are just hardcore bricks. Because if you don't, if you're not going to get 100% support from the department, come on. Because you see, uh, the, the most cruel thing is that all the other departments, uh, they would know what challenges artists are facing. All the others, I know are uh, just as horrible in that uh, they would know what others are fa facing and then you go ask for assistance from them they tell you that your department should be able to do that i'd rather you turn me down and say i don't have money but to, to send me back to to where i come from to where i come from you know, when i know and you that you know that it's, it's, it's horrible you know yeah these are the things the challenges are great yeah, yeah, but I, if you, somebody's got to just pick up the gauntlet and just run with it. Inspired by the incident that happened in the of There are a lot coming. I, I discovered, um, or rather, not really discovered, but I am going to be collaborating with uh, a very young lady. Uh, for me, it's part of my uh, independent producers program. Where I have my independent, they've done their works, they've gone out and sold their plans. I'm going to mentor them. Another one called the Circle. It's a collaboration between the staff and the So you groom her so that she puts on stage bits of the highest quality. So you don't want to And I love the fact that she's a woman. Uh, you know, I think I think I would rest and close my and shut my eyes if I can have five human directors and writers, strictly from the moment. Mm -hmm. I've seen potential uh, about seven, but like I said, resources meant that I, the last uh, communication I had with them was about three, four months ago, and three, four months ago is so much to change, uh, that the world can change and move on. And then, then this lady who approached me, uh, I said, if you my help to do this, and I accepted it. Because I, I would like to, the day I can have a woman director, producer, put a show here, and I was an instrumental in guiding her, that would be my greatest achievement. Now imagine if I can have five, which was my ambition. I'm still struggling to get one. <laughs> but I have, well, you but to push them. Yes. But when are you your love for When did this start? I don't know. I, 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 you know, I was, I was lucky. In primary, uh, uh, next to my Buya Center, mm -hmm. there was this crash. It was called kindergarten. Next to it, uh, there used to be these Saturday classes, or a little bit of the it's like hero, hey. Catholic thing. Yeah. I think I fell in love there. I didn't know I could carry a piece, but I always wondered whenever we had sketches, I'd be picked from 
Kuma or the lead. And he stayed there. But then I got to, I stayed there for years, and then I got to Mafiking, and then drama was specifically, like literally, they, would, they employed people who were paid. Before Mabane there was a Mabana before the building structure. And these guys would go and teach us, and I fell in love. And the crazy thing is that at the age of 14, 15, there were these guys who were South giants in South African theater, Matsimela Managa, Maisha, Joss Levine. These guys were coming to Mafike in the village and they were teaching us. And these are the guys who were studied at the university, studied at the university. And I got hooked. Which is actually the biggest mistake I ever made. <laughs> Getting hooked into this because the frustration of this I got. And the, but was, this, and was this now after? No, no, no. Uh, actually, a little more too large and uh, oh, more green point. Uh, just that. Oh, and I left uh, for my weekend then. And then that's that's so where nice. I was. That's how I, I started flourishing, you know. That's how I started flourishing and starting falling in love. Uh, also, it's a good thing when, when you have an aunt who loves you so much that she'd bribe you to attend. To not quit, to keep, you there. to keep you there, and then you realize you start to shine. You realize, it. wow, this is worth it. So, basically, theater has been your, your life. Yes, lived theater. Yes, for more than 35 years, I've been doing this. Mm. And by now, how old are you? Let me ask. Very, very old. Ready for retirement. Let's keep it at that. Okay. Is there retirement time in this? For me it is because I, I would like to just lay back and, and, and relax and just write and create plays and be able to hand them over to people who, who will pick them up because uh, the way I've been doing it, um, it's been unhealthy. Like I still need to reverse so many scripts that I've written, and there are many. I just polish them a bit for them to get to the level of, uh, you know, able to be oh. performed. Mm. So okay, so then you just want to, to concentrate on yes. your writing. My writing and just polishing them, mm. and just polishing them. Have you ever thought of writing for TV drama, uh, soap? You know, I have, and strangely, I've had uh, guys encouraging me from your big sophies and telenovelas, asking me if I, if I would like to contribute. But it was hard at that time to, to do it when we were trying to set up the theater. I think um, I've said to the guys that uh, one of the reasons why I say I want to retire from writing is now to try to see if I kind of contribute uh, you know, to the content, particularly for the province. Maybe, uh, who knows, we're going to tell a novella which I actually have started uh, writing, just preparing for the pitch. You know, I, I don't want to divulge too many. Too much of it. it would be nice to have something just for because we, you know, all of these telenovelas, is ever is case again. Yeah. You know, this book. Yeah. But for that, for me, I, I think I'm convinced that it will require uh, having to step back from this space. Yeah, you, you know, theater. Because this one, this thing, in this province, consumes your time and energy like none. Like nothing. Because yeah. you must be physically here. Yeah, yeah.